All right. Um, this is the um, demonstration of me installing another Pets fan, uh, the Bullseye. Um, I printed the other, um, this is my second one. So, um, this one was printed a, a little bit different. Um, the layer height is 0.2 instead of 0.1. Uh, infill is about 50, yeah, 50% 50 infill. Um, you only do from the, you only build from the platform up. Um, it's really simple process. Uh, whoever came up with this design, um, you know, hats off. Good work. Because uh, it, it, it's pretty awesome. Um, I've already done my, the one that I have another ender over on the right here. Over here. Um, and the fan's been working great. Uh, the whole the whole mechanisms just kick butt. I, I really like it. I'm I wish I would have done this sooner um, So I'm gonna show a few things now in the PDF um, they say that these um, these little nuts right here here and here are um, M4s uh, They're actually m3s uh 50 pitch so um you can go to ace hardware they're like 39 cents a piece so i picked up like 10 of them um and then instead of using a hex head or allen key uh type for the for the locking screws here um i just used a standard screwdriver because uh my harbor freight uh totally kick-ass uh allen wrench key here um, likes to round off and so when you go in to do one of these um, if it's really tight or you want to lock it down it just snaps off also I don't know how dimensionally accurate um, the uh, the Creality screws are uh, this is an earlier ender uh, this is the one with the the bed that's still glued down and my new ender has the removable bed so um still great little printer it's been working great i haven't done the stemper dampers yet um it's covered in dust and fuzz i gotta remember to pick up some some air um so i'm going to show you the tools that you need to do this and real briefly let go over it so these are the two parts uh, i recommend uh, read the pdf uh super easy you don't have to cut anything you use all the internal parts it's fabulous so the other thing you need is that real tiny Allen wrench, and that is to get to the little screws for the cooling fan, uh, for the part fan. Um, you know, screwdriver, that's what I need for these screws right here. Uh, and then you need the little bigger Allen key for your bigger um, screws here. So I'm just gonna start, uh, oh, and don't forget your nippers very important to have your nippers um, even though I've already put the uh, Capricorn tubing in on this one um, so now I'm just gonna dismantle it real quick for you and um, we can pull the camera back a little bit I'm using my camera mount that I used uh, I printed modified a bit too but this is really easy um, I, I think I did this in five minutes with my, my first fan. And uh, there's, the, there's the shroud. So if anybody needs an extra um, Ender 3 shroud, uh, drop me a line. I'll mail it to you. Because I will most likely never use it. And you can see how much dust, how much... Uh, uh, PLA dust is in my machine. So, housing comes right off, super easy. You can look at how dirty the inside of the fan is. This gives you an opportunity to clean. Um, I mean, this thing is just dusty. So you don't have to remove anything. You don't have to remove the, the wiring harness. You don't have to cut anything. This is the after um, market 
Uh, this is like one of the first prints I did. Um, it works pretty good. I, I don't know uh, if it how well this little um, air shroud works, um, but it's been on my printer since like day one. Uh, it was like one of the first things that I printed. And uh, no complaints there um, that I know of. But of course, until you go to this system, you, who knows? So this thing does create, um, some people have had problems with this one and printing it, you know, it's off a Thingiverse. It's, I don't know, I've never really had a problem with it. But once you remove it, you set that little guy down right there. And then all these tiny little screws that you have right here, you drop them in the middle and it makes a great screw holder. So print this first before you do the pet fan and, uh, and then you've got a little holder. But uh, yeah, this is uh, highly recommend this as a, because the nice thing about this is that it doesn't, it's not gonna take you, um, it, it's not gonna require any soldering, cutting or anything. And I think that's one of the biggest things that freaks any new uh, 3D printer person to the, to the biz here is, Oh my God, if, you know, I, I mean, my soldering skills suck. And soldering isn't really difficult, it just, I, I suck at it. So, then you've got the four inside here. And the, oh wow, that is tight. All right. So there we go. Yeah, the only things that I noticed that you needed, and you don't really need them, you can pretty much use all of the nut, all the hardware from your stock uh, fan shroud with this and uh, with no issue. Those other than those three millimeter or M3 50 pitch um, screws, um that's it that's that's the only thing you need to buy so you're looking you know i always get extras whenever i go because i'm you know i lose stuff and i drop stuff and uh definitely need to clean the fan okay oh wow look at that if you ever wonder why your fan's not running smooth or making funny noises now you know now you know all right, so fan orientation. This is the, the thing that you have to think about. The sticker is going on the back. So your fan shroud is going to come out this direction. The other fan shroud is going to drop in like this. Now, you're going to need a little more play. I'm not sure exactly what that amount of play in this is. So what I did on mine is that, you know, nice thing about uh, Creality is that they provided um, extra zip ties, which is like, Awesome. The other thing to remember too, if you ever are doing any type of heat shrinking, mindful that this braid is very flammable. Uh, scary almost how flammable it is. And uh, it will not hesitate to just start cooking. So be mindful of that. So if you look on this side right here, you'll see that there are these two screws and, and nuts and screws. And you're like, well, what is this for? Right here, there's a, there's a little indentation in the lip, right here. This goes right on this back section right here. So it's a bit tricky trying to get it in, but you have your, your hole here and your hole here. You use the stock screws for that. There's no reason. You've got a little bit of play here to move it around. But the hardest part putting this thing on is making sure that this little shroud right here, part of the metal guide, goes in the correct spot. So, put it in like this. Make sure that it gets in and behind like that. And it sits nice. This print, I think, did was just better overall. 
and uh, so we're going to use this short so if you remember when taking the taking the shroud off originally there are some long screws and the long screws were for the fan so this is one of the long screws and this is one of the shorties right here Whoa. right here this is the shorty screw this shorty screw is going to go right there don't tighten it up very much remember when you're putting in all of this stuff it's it's pla uh you know it's durable but it's not crush proof so the next hardest one is the internal so you see this little spot right here let me get my hand out of there this right here this hole is where you're going to put that other screw and it's going to take some fiddling but you'll feel it drop in and you snug that one up a little bit you want to make sure that this is balanced you don't want it you know snagging anywhere and then tighten up the side now on the side here this is where you're going to need your screwdriver you've got the two screws here now when you start locking these in don't over torque what you're doing okay nice and easy um, you will break this stuff in a heartbeat and uh, then you're just going to be spending time printing it and now that's pretty well locked in I haven't over tightened anything but I want to make sure everything is in in a good position so pull your shroud back a little bit clean your fuzz off of your fan and there we go so the screws now for the fan are going to be the longer screws and there's only two of them are going to have to go in though i think that they created a hole for the fourth one um which i didn't even really look at so that's that's awesome so you can drop that in i like using my little allen screw wrench here and it will start to thread in And you want to make sure your wire is coming off in this direction just for ease on tension. Uh, the, the wire harness up here, the little loopy-doop. See if we can zoom in a little closer. No, nope, can't really see it. Well, basically, it's a little cup thing. Works really good. You put a zip tie around it, it's fine. So the other screw goes in. And then I guess we can put the third one in if we want, which is fabulous. I think I didn't do that on my other one. I may have to go back and change it. And we are tightening up everything, being mindful of the torquage that you're putting on everything don't crush it plastic parts it's not like a car or anything it's not going anywhere all right the reason i'm doing this video is because i uh i noticed wow i chingered up that thing I'm gonna have to go through and really clean those fans. Um, I chingered up that fan pretty good by having crap blow through it. So there's the 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 blower, and um, really simple. You'll see that there's two notches right here and right here. Your blower is going to fit in those notches just like that and i mean this one this one printed so much better it wasn't even funny um and then you can use your standard screw um that is the this is the fourth from the oh maybe i can't nope it's good it locked in a couple teeth it's a little snug I'm gonna grab another one out of the box after I get the uh, the fan shroud on here so then you grab your littlest Allen wrench 
the little Allen and get that started. I found printing this at point two um, reduced the print time to about five hours. Um, I did a time lapse on this one, on this actual printer and the build for it. Um, and it printed really well. I was, there's no reason to do a point one. There really isn't. Unless you just, you know, have to have it. Uh, the way I look at this guy is that he is, you know, it's a tool. And uh, as long as the tool is doing its job, I don't care. There we go. That one's in. Some people were saying that they were worried about the um, PLA melting. Um, I don't print an ABS or anything um, as of yet. Um, I do hear that the Ender 3 does print well in ABS. Um, one of my buddies suggested all he does when he prints an ABS is he takes the power supply off and, and sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. And then he takes a black plastic bag and covers his Ender in a black plastic bag and then prints it uh, and prints PL or sorry uh, ABS. Great. I mean, I'm. I I don't really have a need. Whoa! Totally missed that. What is going on? Let's uh, find out why I missed that hole. Can't have that now, can we? Probably because I didn't have it down in there far enough. All right. Let's try again. No, what is... What's the story here, kids? Whoop. All right, let's pull this off. Well, maybe. Wow. That screw is shorter. Wow, okay. Um, learn something new every day. So, on these little black screws that are um, for the parts fan, I did not see that there were two different sizes. Uh, there's a short and a long. Too short, too long. Um, and this is the shorty. And here, I, so I guess I got lucky with my other fan. I'm gonna have to double check it uh, and and find out if I um, even have that fan locked in. Ooh, yeah, listen to that. There we go. Okay, that's now locked in. So you've got this wedge configuration here let's see if we can get to the underside here and you can actually see it yeah let's keep zooming up here there we go let's keep it out of the light shall we that way we don't blow out there we go okay so the key here is you can see the let's see can you see that yeah okay so the bottom here your, your blower openings are going to hit the heat shroud and the heat block. So you want to make sure that your system, your, your, those little, the right where the vents come out, you want it to be right at, so the vent comes out at the bottom right here. And you want to do that on both sides. So just take your tool, stick it in there, make sure that that vent is in the right position. So I'm gonna do that side, this side first. And what that does is that makes sure that the, when the air comes out, it's not caught by this lip of the heater block. And then the air kind of like circulates or you know creates a vortex or whatever. So make sure 
that it's just under this lip. Now, if you if you go from the PDF on this, uh, the PDF does a really good job of showing you that and saying, hey, you know, this is what you have to do. Um, it even shows you to use the wrench that um, is provided with the ender um, to lay it on the bed. And I'm like, well, why do you need to do that as long as it's not, um, as long as it's not in the way of the, uh, the nozzle, it's really not a concern. At least I don't think it's a concern. All right, so I'm gonna lock that side down. And that's the nice thing about this bullseye is that it's adjustable. Let me, uh, let me grab uh, another one of those screws. I'm going to use a Phillips on this side. All right, then you take your Allen wrench again, stick it in the duct, making sure that it's at the correct level, and then gently, gently tighten down that screw until the bullseye fan shroud is nice and stable. And a little bit of a torque on it. Yep. All right. Definitely need to get some compressed air. All right. Well, that's looking really good. Nice and stable. It's good. Now, what I do is I get these, you know, it's really funny is that the last batch of um, zip ties that I got for the first ender, you know, no cr major critique on the, uh, on, <laughs> on the zip ties, but this batch of zip ties suck. So when I go to Fry's Electronics later today, I'm going to pick up some more tiny zip ties. What happens is that little, the little flex clip inside there just breaks. So what I do is I pull the shroud back down on the side here and I put a zip tie in to make sure that that does not unravel um, because this has a tendency if it's not been heat sealed properly um, just likes to go wild. Um, I'm going to bring this down so you can maybe see it a little better. Yeah. There it is. So you'll see this little cup right here. Um, that cup is for releasing tension off of these lines in your heater block. So you just take your zip tie, loop it under, make sure your zip tie doesn't suck. Like, oop, yep, suck factor is definitely reduced. So. And you're not compressing the cables, you're just holding them in that spot. Um, and that's just to reduce tension off of this cable moving all over the place. Then also, you can put another zip tie across that cross member, but I'm not going to, like I did on my other one. So I'm like looking, up, looking to my right and seeing what I did on this one. So there it is. Um, I don't even worry about that. I don't have to worry about the layer, the build height, or my, you know, where my plate is because I've already, um, it's already checked. Let's crank her up. Yeah, you're a dirty fan. Um... My back fan is already running. Let me steal my SD card from my other printer. And I'm gonna, I believe I have a test print that I did um, right here. 
So this is the, the test print that I did. Uh, it's 10% infill, so you can see how crappy the back is. The little base popped right off. Um, this is all printed at 0.1 uh, layer height. It's quite flexible still. Um, and it printed really, really well. And this was uh, just my stock Creality, uh, or sorry, stock um, Matter Hackers Cura setup. And uh, this takes about 56 minutes to print. So I'm now going to print this and um, see how it looks. And also, um, for a future, I also created this. This is an LED uh, light rig. So I 3D, I designed this in Tinkercad. Uh, it's got three LEDs on it. It will eventually get super glued to the underside here like that. And then it will then have a wiring harness that will go up through the, the existing mesh over and then I have a dimmer over here for a light rig that I created that will be on the same circuit. Uh, it's a separate power supply completely. So you just put some super glue right here. Oops, super glue right on this part. And then it's going to glue right into position right under the bullseye and is going to basically look like it belongs there. It will illuminate everything because of the angle. You can see the angle in which I designed it. And then this is just standard eight millimeter um, cheap LED uh, standard clip. I just used uh, super glue and a uh, Insta Cure spray on it. <clears throat> Got it all placed on. The nice thing about this is that I can actually remove this clip and solder it on the ends if I want, but I, I'm not going to. And the orientation is just like that, and it kind of looks like it's kind of like a grill in the front. It was fun making that. Um, I will include this file, so if anybody wants to print this or have any questions or anything like that, I will uh, include the link on that, and you can go find it on my Thingiverse. It's a really easy part to print, and it fits right under. It's about 45 millimeters long, and it fits right under that little cup. And so I'm going to be doing the same thing with my other ender, and I've got it wired up exactly the same way as this. So let's see what this will do. And we'll do a quick little time lapse on it that you probably won't be able to see very much. So this is, it's called the spiral thing. That's what that is, spiral thing. So there we go. I'm going to print it real quick and uh, we'll do a time lapse.